Uh, I'm a pulmonary critical care sleep doctor at Scripps Clinic in La Jolla, California. And uh, honored to be a member of the board. And I've known Dr. Beckman for many years. Had the honor of caring for him as a physician. Well, I took care of Dr. Beckman for over 11 years. And uh, we had a great relationship. Well, the Beckman Foundation was started by Dr. Beckman to advance science, which is something that he influenced in a huge way. And as a matter of fact, I think that uh, his impact on science and medicine is much greater than we commonly are aware of. The focus has been on basic science and on some of his earlier developments, but he has impact on human life right now. And I can tell you this as a, a lung critical care sleep doctor who spent much of his career in the intensive care unit. There's hardly anything that we do that wasn't influenced by Dr. Beckman. He started with the pH meter, measuring saturation and measuring CO2. And without blood gases and measuring chemistries in the lab, we would have very little in the ICU that could be impacted that save lives. And now some of the technology has changed and things have advanced, but Dr. Beckman really started something which really defines his greatness. Starting something with his natural curiosity and building on it in a way that perpetuated itself and grew to enormous proportions. Well, I was uh, asked because of my relationship with Dr. Beckman when there was a need on the board and was honored to be asked. I think people that knew Dr. Beckman felt a personal connection to the kind of person he was. He had enormous integrity and natural curiosity and was just fascinating to talk to because there wasn't any subject that he wasn't interested in or couldn't contribute to. So I'm honored to be part of a great group of people who are making a serious influence on research, basic research. And I think that uh, the need to support research has been gigantic as the support for research has diminished. So the Beckman Foundation is more important now than ever before. Dr. Beckman was an individual who had natural curiosity in science. And no matter what we talked about, he would always have a lot of questions and try to contribute his own ideas. At the same time, as modest as he was, he also was a giant. In, in science, as a physician, we know that most of the great achievements occur when individuals stand on the shoulders of giants. And Dr. Beckman was one of those giants. And today, our advances in science are really largely in part from Dr. Beckman's original work. And in medicine, as I've mentioned before, the fact is that he is saving lives today by what we do right now in the ICU in the hospitals, in healthcare, by being able to measure oxygenation, CO2, which essentially is carbonic acid, pH, and there's probably no aspect of healthcare that isn't touched by some of Dr. Beckman's work. And I just think that uh, what he did was far more than solving a problem of detecting retrolental fibroplasia from giving oxygen to infants. What he did is give us a way to provide oxygen at a level that was safe and appropriate for people who needed it, not just needed because their oxygen was low, but were not given too much oxygen so they didn't develop oxygen toxicity, while at the same time monitoring their ability to breathe, which allows them to eliminate carbon dioxide or carbonic acid, can be monitored now with CO2 monitoring 
that allows us to ventilate people adequately, not too much, not too little. Likewise, pH detection is critical for managing patients with metabolic disorders as well as acid-base disorders. So the care of patients today in, in every hospital in the world, every place where they take care of sick patients, has to use devices that originally were conceived and developed by Dr. Beckman. We owe a great debt of gratitude to him and everybody who's had a life saved in a hospital setting or the care that's provided now with the fantastic tools we have, have a vote of thanks to give to Dr. Beckman because he initiated this. He was the giant whose shoulders we stand on. Ted Brown was an example of the kind of great individual that took on a leadership role at the Beckman Institute here at the University of Illinois that carried Beckman's legacy forward. He did not speak the words and then do something else. He did the job and people saw what he did and he led by example. And he followed what Dr. Beckman did, who also led by example. He had the natural curiosity, integrity, focus on excellence, and the ability to get people to be better than they would be without him. I only met Ted at the last visit here, so I didn't personally work with Dr. Brown, but in talking to him and seeing his impact, it's clear to me that this institution, the Beckman Institute here at the University of Illinois, is an example of the kind of legacy from Dr. Beckman and from what Ted Brown brought to this city. And I must say it's an honor to know him. It's an honor to be part of this great group who supports the kind of behavior, integrity, curiosity, and mission that brings greatness to institutions. Dr. Beckman was a big believer in the scientific process. And the scientific process depends on verifiable truth. He knew the importance of that. He knew the need to support it. And that, I think, is one of the perpetuating elements that weaves together most of the people who are supported by the Beckman Foundation and are at the, very, at the Beckman Institutes and are the young new investigators and scholars of today. They know the importance of integrity, they know the importance of verifiable truth, and they act on it in a way that produces excellence. I think the legacy of Dr. Beckman and Ted Brown are very simple and similar. They both believe in the importance of science, they both know the importance of integrity, and the importance of excellence. And they lived a life that demonstrates these features. We're honored to be the recipient of the greatness that they produced. The medical aspects of this is where uh, a lot of things that have been said about Dr. Beckman are extended from some of his scientific discoveries into areas that are important, but the fact is the aspects of his influence in medicine has been very poorly stated. In fact, not very stated at all in, in many cases. And if you really pay attention, and if you're in healthcare, in any part of healthcare, you can't help but noticing that Dr. Beckman has saved lives in the past, and he saves lives now, and he'll save lives in the future because everything we do touches on the technology that he started. And although people have refined some of these tools, he was the original brainchild that started the things that we depend on now. We have a great debt of thanks to him. The Beckman Brown Grant 
is intended to help in Dr. Brown's name fund researchers in the future. Something that will be in his honor for what he has done as an example of the work done here at the Beckman Institute in University of Illinois and to try to help the young investigators in this university which uh, is a tribute to him and what he has brought here. Well this is the second time that I've been to this institution and I've been impressed every time and part of the reason that I'm so impressed is that the community spirit that exists here is none like any place I've been. And the collaboration between people of great accomplishment is extraordinary. So I think that the spirit of community here is a great example for other great institutions to look at and learn from. So often in academics, people are so busy pursuing their career and trying to achieve their own greatness that they forget that they're a part of a community of science, a community of helping long after they're gone, the community that Dr. Beckman stood for. The University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign stands for that. It's impressive to come here, even though it's a challenge sometimes to make the trip. But we will still make the trip because it's worth it. The beauty of the Foundation Board is it's just that. It's a group of people working together to fund basic research and the projects that Dr. Beckman started. And although there are some people that are superb the fact is, every member of this board has special expertise they bring to the table and make the community of the board very effective. And honestly, for me, it's an honor to be part of that group. I think the future is extremely promising. We've had a great executive director in the past, and we have a new great executive director now taking over. The membership is growing. We're getting more involvement from the Scientific Advisory Council, which is, I think, a very powerful addition, something Dr. Beckman, I believe, would be very proud of. And I think that we have involved people who are contributing their time and energy for a greater good. I think that uh, Harry Gray has done a great job as uh, filling in as president at a time when uh, we had a lot of loss from various leaders, and he's been a stable force that's been helpful for the existing members, and for that matter, for the future of what we're going to produce uh, after he steps down in his retirement. We look forward to continued interaction with him and with this great board and with all the various scientists who are supported by the Beckman Foundation. Mm -hmm.